Hi friends, hello the world. Welcome back to this episode, a bonus episode again, of my conversations with my dear friend Telma. Uh, Telma, welcome back again to talk about different topics. Hi, yeah, we're back from our, well, my summer break. I know that you're, you're <laughs> probably starting your holidays as well, but yeah, great to be back here talking to you. Yeah, so um, Telma and I talk about different topics and actually many of them that she suggested. So I'm very grateful that uh, you have all these great ideas of topics that also makes me think about them, you know, on my own or what it is uh, that I think about that topic. So this time we thought of talking about vulnerability and courage. Um, and I think this is one of those topics that's uh, not easy to get around or be specific or pragmatic about it because we have this idea of, okay, this is maybe hard or it's something that I don't really want to put myself into uh, and therefore I don't really like um, close the doors whenever it's possible. I feel like this is the topic uh, that uh, we could maybe today start discussing in terms of what it is that really we are talking about in our personal lives maybe also um, and also uh, share our ideas of some ways for people to think about or start thinking about it and then possibly apply for their own lives um, if they decide that they have this courage to do that. So the topic, the questions that I want to talk about today is what it is that uh, we mean when we say vulnerability or vulner being vulnerable. And is it actually good to be vulnerable? Uh, like some of my you know, uh, audience uh, would say, and also, when is it good to be vulnerable if we decide this is a good thing uh, and when it's not, right? So these are the practical, I guess, ways of uh, looking at it. So first, uh, Telma, maybe we could discuss about uh, our thoughts about uh, vulnerability as such. What do you have? Uh, just... <laughs> Sorry about that. This morning, I think my husband was coming down. I don't know. I don't know. Do you want? I'm really sorry. Do you need to start again? Oh. Yeah. So I guess um, I want to kind of be known for uh, dismantling words. Uh, I'm not a big fan of labels, um, and mm. a lot of people use those words and then attach very different meanings to them. Mm. Um, and uh, if we take a word like vulnerable or vulnerability, um, it comes from the Latin word wound, mm. um, vulnus, um, and it essentially means open to injury, open to wound. Yeah. Um, and that's the root of where that word comes from. And I think over time, you know, it, it's been kind of evolved to being just sensitive or, um, or essentially kind of weak. Um, but as mm. many of us know, you know, vulnerability is courage right um and so uh that's that's how i think not on my own but you know a few years ago reading lots of writers like Brene brown talk about vulnerability um it, you start to reclaim some words that were used and used as you know negative mm -hmm. uh, or have a connotation that is not necessarily um uh constructive i would say but uh, certainly for me if I start from a point where vulnerability means you're open to injury, open to wounds, that's a much braver way to look at it, right? Yeah, exactly. So for me, I was also reading from, uh, as you're saying, Brené Brown, but also really understanding is that vulnerability is living in your own true way. Um, and whatever that uh, truth means for you, and also uh, not afraid of um, being seen or mm -hmm. not hiding yourself, I think. Yeah, appearing as you exactly. are. Exactly, appearing yeah. as you are, exactly. I think yeah. that's authentic, what we mean really is appearing as you are and not trying to pretend or hide under different disguise in the hope of not being uh, injured or wounded, right? Like you're saying. So I think that's um, that's the way that I was looking at it and also trying to really understand for myself how I can live it that way. Even in situations where 
I may get scared or I may get uh, worried how I will be perceived or what people may think or whatever. Even in those circumstances, try to still hold on to how I really want to show up rather mm-hmm. than how I want to be seen mm-hmm. in that circumstance. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, interesting. yeah. Tell me. One of the, one of the things that while you're just saying that got me thinking is like one of the reasons why vulnerability is such a difficult word is because um, there is another aspect of vulnerability which is when people use their weakness mm-hmm. as a weapon or an armor. Yeah, but they're not really being vulnerable. Um, they're just showing weakness to kind of disarm other people. Yeah, and that sometimes makes it difficult for people when they are authentically being vulnerable because a lot of people are second guessing vulnerability like you know um and uh, we we all know what it feels like when it's inauthentic vulnerability when someone's saying something but yeah, we know yeah. their actions aren't exactly correlating uh, and they're not exactly authentic right. so it it that triggered that thought when you were just speaking about it about appearing as you are um appearing as you are doesn't mean that you uh you know have no guard around you or no kind of perception of how things that you're saying or doing will be taken by an audience or even understanding if an audience is ready for that um, Mm. approach and the most important part of it I think is your intention behind your vulnerability yeah um, because that is not as you are that is for a particular reason right so that's Mm. that's something that's quite interesting and that's probably why it makes it a bit difficult to separate you know, when someone really is open to wound or if the person is actually not open to wound, but they know that they can gain from being Mm. more sensitive or emotional to a particular cause. Right. I think in that context, it's, you know, I always try to measure it from the perspective of, am I doing it for myself because that feels true to me or am I doing it for other people's sake? Yeah. which does not feel too true to me, meaning yeah. that I'm doing it for the sake of receiving something or approval, yeah. validation or whatever, yeah. in which case then it becomes to that pretentious um, zone, I feel, because then mm-hmm. I'm really trying to indirectly manipulate others' perception yeah. and trying to behave in a way that they approve so that I can get something from it, right? So yeah. Yeah, exactly. that could be the way to measure for yourself, whether you're doing yeah. it because it feels true to you or you're doing it for others' sake. Yeah, Yeah, and I guess the starting point uh, for me, the gateway of any of this is just self-awareness, right? So yeah. the starting point of vulnerability is to be vulnerable with yourself. There's so exactly. many things you know, within time. And like when people say like when you're younger, you think about these wise men and you, you, you grow up slowly understanding what wisdom is. Like wisdom really is like when you are, centered in yourself and you truly understand yourself and you make decisions and you can hear the truth when it's spoken yeah um but to feel really like you're being authentic or really show your vulnerability you have to have already been vulnerable to yourself there's so many things that we suppress as human beings for survival um for you know just like we forget uh, yeah. we don't write things down yeah. um people start journals and then all of a sudden they they change their perspective on things because they can reread what they're saying yeah um, and so i think to start with really understanding you know yourself yeah it's going to open up to really finding that authentic voice and then being able to say like this is the journey i've been on this is the journey i've been through yeah. and sharing it because it's helpful for other people um but not necessarily to manipulate them to yeah. give you a better social status or right. uh, that doesn't mean that it doesn't come you know if you if you appear as somebody who's wise people who are drawn to wisdom right yeah exactly but it, yeah but it's important to have that first um kind of i would say coming to yourself uh, mm-hmm. before you could really truly show what appearing as yourself is if you if you don't know yourself yeah. how can you appear as yourself you know Exactly. Um, And I think that's an excellent point to also uh, highlight that um, you cannot do any of that if you're not truly feeling what's inside, as you were saying, and also being honest with yourself, right? Uh, And also um, having that strength and courage within you to experience what's inside because oftentimes that's the difficult part to look at we are 
often good at looking at other people's weaknesses or think that they have this or that, this is the topic that they should work on. But when it comes to our own inner, um, I don't know, garden or what's going on there, uh, it's actually not easy to look at and also painful sometimes. And uh, the only way we can really be authentic or uh, vulnerable, I guess, ready to be vulnerable outside, as you're saying, is by only looking at what's inside first. And without that, I think there is no way to be vulnerable um, with the external world because then it all be always will be sounding like pretentious way of mm -hmm. uh, being. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and the other thing that happens is that um, vulnerability triggers things in other people mm. um, that we yeah. have to be aware of, right? So, and it can be quite a violent trigger. Like we've seen lots of things happening with the Olympic athletes, Simone mm. uh, Miles dropping out of the Olympics, or you know, Naomi Osaka recently. Um, you know, other people publicly feeling like you know they're you know great athletes that have shown kind of so much um, courage and that so much skill and so much perfection. Mm. And the moment that they show anything less than, you know, what we consider to be um, athletic perfection, uh, um, we, it triggers in, in a lot of people in a way that I worry for society, like it triggers a lot of rage. Mm. And I think, people use other people's courage to feel good about themselves mm, in a way that like mm -hmm. potentially they then attach things that they struggle with, their vulnerabilities. Um, they kind of suppress their vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. They use this kind of heroic acts of bravery and uh, heroic acts of success um, as a safe, safe space safe place away mm -hmm. from any kind of pain mm -hmm. and then the moment the person tells you well I also I'm suppressing something and I'm going through things it makes people very angry the angrier it makes you the more that you have to ask yourself why does someone else's vulnerability annoy you and upset you so much right absolutely absolutely <laughs> And you see, you know that um, vulnerability actually can be a good topic that helps us mirror so many things about ourselves. So yeah. someone else's vulnerability, like you're yeah. saying, can mirror uh, to us what's going on within us, right? So that can help yeah. us also look inside. And it's it doesn't have to be even anger. It can be also something like, um, I don't really understand why they would do this, right? Uh, a lot of people we're saying that uh, how could they do it? We think that of them in these ideal ways and now they're telling us something else that we don't really expect. Yeah. And if you are in that position, finding yourself, then you could also ask why you are having difficulty accepting their way of processing things, right? So yeah. that really also shows that maybe you have difficulty processing things within you and therefore you're having struggle with it. So yeah. Yeah, it also shatters perception that in many ways there's nothing wrong with any of us. We're yeah. all complete, but it shatters exactly. perception that there are better people than us. So when <laughs> someone famous or someone rich you know, goes through mental health problems. It's really like, but I, but I thought if I carried on doing what I was doing and being really brave, one day I will escape from internal turmoil and pain and the, you know, human yeah. condition. And it's just not, it's just not realistic. I think the more people realize that, like, at some point, um, you know, everyone really is fundamentally the same. Yeah. They might have you know, the emperor's clothes on and everything, but they're all fundamentally the same. And there is a there is a joy and pain dynamic of life that more people realize that it applies to everyone yeah. the more that we will have enough people courageous to kind of address that pain part right because you know with with a famous person that you look up to you're almost not accepting them you only accept mm -hmm. their joy and their yeah. positive <laughs> right and that's what you give them money for and you pay them yeah. to see right you haven't asked them to tell you about the suffering and the pain. You don't want to hear about it. And that's why the, the media like 
brings people, crashes people down and they, they do something wrong and then it's like they're destroyed, right? But it's something in society that I think is starting to kind of shake a little bit because mm. the, the mask can't be kept on for long enough, I guess, to, to hide all of this. But the reality is that being vulnerable is courageous if it's an authentic vulnerability, right? Yeah. And it is brave. And that to get to where they were, they had to be vulnerable a lot. They have Absolutely. a lot of people scrutinizing everything that they're doing. Absolutely. And I think the fact that we've disconnected courage and vulnerability is why we're having such a like reaction mm -hmm. because we think these two concepts are very different and they're not. Yeah. Um, and Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So I guess in this context, it would be also good to talk about, um, I think we're already talking about um, the importance of being vulnerable and without which we cannot really get to places that we want to get, we, meaning that we don't really grow in the way that we could grow if we are not vulnerable, right? And I think uh, a lot of people then might be asking, um, I mean, further, um, really, is it really good to show it? Or is it really good to display it, right, yeah. uh, in the same context? Or it's something that we just do in the background, beyond, behind the scenes, so to say, and then we only show once everything's processed or once everything is done and then we yeah. come out to the to the world so what are your thoughts on that yeah so i think it's super important to understand whether or not the environment that you're in is a safe place for you to feel like your um authentic self will not be um kind of used as a kind of uh, mechanism to to, to like uses a weakness to mm. go against you if you know what I mean mm. like you know many women you know spend their lives worrying about things and like being vulnerable in certain environments is not recommended you know mm -hmm. there are you know being vulnerable and explaining you know things about yourself to to, to people who you don't trust can be very dangerous right yeah. and unfortunately there is the other side of vulnerability which is like you know a lot of people are just waiting to find vulnerable what they consider vulnerable people to um influence and to you know you you open up a wound and you're mm. open to that, that that to appearing as yourself and this is your struggle and this is what you're going through um some sociopaths enjoy having people who have um you know opened up and shown vulnerability so mm. there is a negative aspect of it is courageous to be able to say, look, I'm going on a journey and I want to solve these things for myself. Yeah. I'm open to what happens next and I'm going to be brave about it. Um, but you can also be pragmatic and know that there are some people whose whose own journeys are so far back that they may use this mm. as something to, uh, as a weapon essentially against mm. you. Mm. So you have to be careful. I, I'm not a believer that you have to tell everybody everything that you meet, everyone you meet about your life like I just don't believe that's I think we need to be like pragmatic as like humans like not everyone is at the same level of understanding as you and not everyone is a safe a safe place for you to share mm. the problem is though we are naturally draw, drawn to share our burden I don't mm. actually think it's the opposite that no one wants to be vulnerable I think a lot of people are vulnerable and they that's how they make and form, form relationships they're based on exactly. this bond of like sharing the deepest darkest secrets and yeah. things that we really struggle with and um they form this bond it's like a trauma bond i think that's mm -hmm. what they call it they form a trauma bond but they're not in the right relationship it's just that it feels like the person is the right person because they know everything about your trauma mm -hmm. and then you feel like you're you know you you're bonded by this and it's very very dangerous to do it because once you share that vulnerability in your authentic self, it's hard to take it back. Um, mm. And then it's hard to let go of that person because it was so hard to share in the first place. So I do think that there are a few little tips to think about when, <laughs> when, um, when you think about vulnerability. One is obviously understanding that vulnerability uh, in, many, in many ways is exactly the same as courage and bravery and strength. Okay. Um, but it doesn't mean that you need to be courageous with everyone that you meet, right? So, mm -hmm. and, and every circumstances that every circumstance that you are in, um, yeah. you have to also be discerning 
So for me, um, you know, whenever people tell me, is it good to be vulnerable or not? Um, I guess the only answer that comes to my mind is that it's just necessary. So it's either, it's not bad or good. It's just, I think human experience somehow requires us to be vulnerable in one way or another, whether we're trying to shove it or hide it is a different topic, but at least this is how human experience is, I think. So then um, once we know that it's necessary, I think it becomes a bit like a less dangerous or difficult topic. It's more like, okay, how do I make it fit to myself, to my own yeah. individual situation? What do I want to uh, make it mean or how do I use it basically, right? Um, and And another thing for me is that vulnerability, also a deep trust in yourself and in the people that you are being vulnerable with. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it doesn't really work, I think. Mm -hmm. So unless you're trusting yourself and the other, then you can be vulnerable, like you said. Yeah. And those type of trusting relationships, I think, are relationships that we automatically have with people that we love or we respect and we want to be in relationships. So yeah. therefore, those conditions already make it the foundation for us to then start showing up who we are. And whenever um, we are second guessing or not wanting to be vulnerable, then I guess the question is whether that's a relationship worth pursuing or not, right? Of mm -hmm. course, I'm not saying that we are always in charge of uh, which relationships we have because in, sometimes at work we have certain colleagues or we have mm -hmm. um, environment where we happen to be working with certain people and and if we're not uh, in trusting ways with them of course there is probably no need or even it's not possible to be vulnerable so it's mm -hmm. it's a bit like um, a universe's rule I think that you can only be vulnerable in the space where you're trusting yourself and others to come to that um, being seen mode. Um, and so therefore, um, I would always um, recommend that if we are not being vulnerable or we are having difficulty being vulnerable, then A, is it really something about our trust that we need to look at in ourselves, mm -hmm. right? And trust in those people. So what might be in the way of being authentic and being seen um, because the alternative of it could be that we are trying to constrain ourselves yeah and we're not really having this inner freedom to be interacting in the the real way that we really who we are so meaning that we're not really able to tell our truth in that relationship then the question is where the problem might be, right? So yeah. where the problem might be that we want to look at so that we can then continue um, building that relationship uh, while being vulnerable. Yeah, I think for, for just based on what you've said, like for, for me, I think maybe there's just two phases of it. So one is, you know, redefining what vulnerability means to you. I think it makes yeah. a big difference. The more you yeah. read about it, the more you understand that like, people really worry about this idea of floodgates opening. Like mm. if, I have, if I dig deep enough into myself, I'm just going to fall apart because I'm going to open myself up to the floodgates and it's going right. to be awful. And actually, ironically, I don't think people are as vulnerable with their families as they think they are. Mm. I think people have roles they play and their families know incidents in their life more than anyone mm. else. But they have these roles they play in their family that actually stay quite similar throughout the, the, the life, life of a family. And yeah. you find yourself when you make friends opening up about stuff that you just wouldn't find appropriate to talk to your family about, right? Mm -hmm. So even if there's a trusting relationship within your family, it's not necessarily the place where you are your most vulnerable or you share your most hopes mm. and your fears and your dreams and things. And I think the first, for me, the first stage is like, like you said, it's all about you. It's about figuring out inside, you know, what is your... Yeah. What, what is your fear about opening up? What, why do you think right. the floodgates are going to open? And be realistic about the role that a family is supposed to play. They're not supposed to be your shelter or your refuge for every single thing that you need in, to solve in life, mm -hmm. right? 
um, and they have a specific role that needs and dynamic that needs to remain the dynamic in the family because that's just you know if you have multiple children it's like it's you know there's quite a complex siblings are a complex beast right and then the second part I think is you know related to what you're saying is once you've done the work for the first part you still have the work for where, figuring out like why am I feeling like I can't be myself in this environment you know I have that feeling sometimes in certain groups you know mm. when I'm at work I'm literally a different person because mm -hmm. I, that person will not talk about something I'm going through or something that's very fundamental to me or things that hurt that I need to address. But I'll go on to another Zoom call with another colleague and it's the first thing I talk about. Yeah. And it's like, for that colleague, they might think, oh, I just tell everyone it. But I, but like, there is a, there's an element of like trust and right. What does, how is someone going to, are people in the audience you're speaking to open to even hear you will will they you know ridicule you or um have they hurt you in another way that you don't think they even deserve your vulnerability you know mm -hmm. so like i think I that second part makes more sense once you've done the first because unfortunately it becomes super confusing like if you know you're you still think that you're very vulnerable at home and you're actually not um, and you don't know that vulnerability is courage and you don't know the vulnerability is you know being open to appear as yourself and all of that stuff I think it needs to be important but once you are in a place where you know a little bit more about yourself you're a bit a bit wiser to what vulnerability is it doesn't mean that it's like comes naturally to know where you're in a safe space right mm -hmm. and when you just mentioned it now it's like it's so true like ask yourself the question like is it really that I'm not able to be vulnerable or is it that uh, my natural instincts are telling me this is not the environment to be vulnerable in? Have, have, have I, am I working in, a, in, a, in an office or an environment that is a threat to me? Um, and, I, and is that why I'm not myself? Has, every, has anyone ever said, like when they've seen me with you know, a, a personal friend, if a colleague says to you, oh, I didn't know you were like this or mm. at a party, it's like, yeah, that's when you discover like, yeah, people are very different in different environments. And, and uh, it's because they don't trust that environment. It's the whole idea of inclusion, right? But mm. if they don't feel included in an environment or they don't feel safe in an environment, you can define vulnerability all you like. They're not going to be vulnerable. And I do yeah. think vulnerability makes you more creative, more innovative. It makes you more a better employee, like, and true vulnerability, not manipulative vulnerability, obviously, but like, and so how does a employer on like tap into that um, and like tap into that like understanding and empathy and compassion um, in an environment where people are so different and you know it's not always it doesn't always feel safe for employees to be themselves you know I think what you're saying makes so much sense if you so depending on how you define vulnerability for yourself I think because when you were talking about vulnerability is open to show wounds or open to be wounded or open to you know show your deepest sides right i think mm -hmm. if we talk about it from that perspective what you're saying makes total sense uh if we're talking about vulnerability from the point of view of just being seen of who you truly are mm -hmm. then it's a bit different i think so it's uh because the alternative for me uh, of not being vulnerable means we're trying to not be ourselves, right? So mm -hmm. in a way that's, um, because for me, I guess vulnerability is when you have processed all of that things inside and there is really no floodgate as such. So meaning that I open up something and then all oh, everything comes out or yeah. um, I, I think I don't really start from there when I talk about vulnerability for some reason, because maybe also for me, I have um, done so much work on my, you know, internal floodgates so much yeah. so that there is no gate happening, meaning there yeah. is no flood to be handled. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, right. So therefore, I think I have come to a point where I don't really worry as such that there is something coming out that I may not be able to handle or I don't really trust or whatever. So I think yeah. it's interesting for uh, distinguishing and uh, yeah, and bringing this nuance that if you think that 
you have things that are within you that hasn't been processed, I totally agree that it might be very important for you to process all of that mm -hmm. in the safe environment that you consider necessary to do that. So that you don't all of a sudden are in a situation where you are showing your emotions that you don't really think you can handle them at the time or you don't really want to be handling them with those people around right so therefore i think important to really look into yourself and see if there is really as such a uh, flood to be uh, looked at yeah uh, I, wound, I do yeah. think though that it's kind of they're kind of different dynamics this depends on obviously like where you come from and you know what you do professionally and like how you see the world yeah. because like because for me one one really difficult thing to to reconcile in this conversation is like society has some expectations of people mm -hmm. that just won't shift irrespective of how courageous or how open you are right mm. and those expectations you've been told them for so long yeah that it just becomes part of your kind of social contract to be in society mm. you kind of just just do it without even thinking so yeah there is a certain aspect of you know as a black woman at work mm. there's a certain aspect where you have these kind of stereotypes that you would love to be I would love to show up as my authentic self and like mm. not have any worries and I'm not really particularly someone who kind of hides behind anything mm. but I am more acutely aware of mm. bias and yeah. how people perceive your true yeah. self, basically, because yeah. they, because everyone has different ways they per they perceive other people, but there is a lot of generalizations that have to happen mm. because it's just so many people to to yeah. understand, right? Yeah, so people have little boxes they put everyone in. Right. And when someone when someone is you know supposed to be a strong woman or mm. supposed to not have any kind of fears and is seen as some sort of robot, right? Shows vulnerability. People actually respond to it in a much more dramatic way. Mm. Uh, they, they see it as something really like, oh, there must be something terrible happening because you're supposed to be a strong woman or whatever. I see. So you're not allowed necessarily, you know, there is different, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one because there are different women who have different leeway to vulnerability yeah like it's kind of like more accepted in certain and for me personally I feel like I don't have the bandwidth or the um the good faith mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. to be my authentic self or mm -hmm. you know like yeah. the real person who dances and like has you know like has emotional uh emotional feelings or sometimes I just don't feel I have it like I don't mm. have the space to be like that so mm -hmm. I I'm not I'm not like that because I know that you know appearing as I am would cause so much disruption that it's mm. not worth it for the audience that is getting that version of me I see and mm -hmm. people put people in a box like and that, it's hard to get out of that box and unless you have these kinds of conversations with people and you say, look, sometimes yeah. I don't feel like I can talk about this. I'll give you a really easy one. Yeah. I find it very difficult when people are talking about like diversity and race and those topics, because people have this assumption that my view is very one dimensional. On it. And if you're vulnerable about it or how, mm. it, and how it impacts you, people think that you're being biased because you're the topic, the subject area is something so closely related to you that you're not even mm. able to distinguish between mm. like what's what's. The opinion of other people and like what you feel because you're kind of emotionally connected to a particular topic yeah and so sometimes when these topics come up I'm not myself or vulnerable because I don't want people to have the wrong impression that I'm somehow biased on the topic mm. you know uh, and it just is something that is, ex exists there's nothing and that doesn't mean though you know we're having this discussion together but it doesn't mean I'm not open to vulnerability with many other people outside mm -hmm. of that environment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but, but I, I have to always check first of people's like ability to embrace nuance yeah and understand that people aren't one thing you mm -hmm. know absolutely they're not they're not you're not just a life coach you're not just a, a woman you're not just you know black mm -hmm. you're you're not just someone who works in a particular company or like and it's it's 
unfortunately, until we become more nuanced in the way we interpret people, yeah. everyone's always going to be tasked with different shades of vulnerability for different mm. audiences. Yeah. Right? Um, so I think what, you know, when we were saying about that trust, at least for me, so that's my indicator, I guess. Yeah. So whenever I think that I'm trusting that audience, then I can be the way that I want to. And mm -hmm. whenever I think that I'm not going to be understood or I'm going to be misunderstood, or I don't think they are going to be discussing topics in the way that I can contribute to, then obviously um, I will probably focus on something else. So I think we're talking about um, the same things like you were saying that if you know or if you think that the, your audience in this particular instance talking about diversity may not be um, uh, you know, discussing with you in the way that makes you really say or show what you are uh, really thinking about, maybe then, yeah, you already know that your trust level is not there for you to be that vulnerable that you really want to. So. Um, I think for me, uh, that's always the first thing that comes up as if like a filter, if you will, yeah. to say, okay, this is the area, the environment where I can trust and I can be that vulnerable. And this is the environment where I don't think I can trust. So therefore I, um, I may focus on something else or I may just listen or whatever else I do. So, yeah, I mean, one way, one way to do it, which is what I try to do is just tell people I can't necessarily be vulnerable here. Like mm -hmm. I, I try to say, I don't have, I don't have the grace of being able to be my authentic self mm. completely. Mm. That doesn't mean I don't know who my authentic self is, yeah. but it just means it just so people know, like, you know, this is a topic I've thought about, but I know that it's not anymore. It's not blaming or pointing fingers. It's just yeah. to say, I can't be my full self because this is the environment we're still in. And one day maybe you know, things will change and maybe it doesn't need to change. Yeah. Maybe not every environment needs to be trust, trusting. Like we said, I said earlier, like it doesn't have to always be everything perfectly, you know, perfectly set for you to be vulnerable. I think what is really courageous is actually letting people understand that there, there is something that lies beneath any facade that you create Mm. and understanding why you've created it and like how you kind of um you know show yourself how you show up to people I think that's just as important because yeah. I don't want anyone to ever think that it's because I you know I don't want to trust them but it's just the way that sometimes you know that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes you know society does create these like something very simple there's this extreme feeling of like women in the workplace are overly emotional right mm. And so there's this idea, it's like, oh, here we go, she's crying again. That's that's the, you know, everyone's comfortable to say stuff like that. But mm. you know, women have a ability to interpret and empathize in a very acute way and carry things with them that actually from a communication perspective is actually a strength, like the way that they can get to the heart of a matter, um, even in a business environment. But if people explained it like that, rather than like, oh, she's getting very emotional. Like it's not seen as a strength. Mm -hmm. um, it's seen as a weakness, but it actually often isn't. But some, it's the fact that someone can humanize a situation, especially when you work in a company that works with consumers and humans, you know, often you work with these companies and they service mostly female. And then there's like <laughs> men who don't like female <laughs> views or stuff. But it, it, it can happen in many types of organizations where women are massive consumers you know yeah. um of products and you know we kind of we, uh, there's a famous saying that we're the architects of society but we're also the you know the kind of feeders and the you know the nurturers of society in many cases and um we often put we have a very strong purchasing power as well mm -hmm. but i do feel like our uh, the voice of a woman is sometimes used as a source of weakness mm. so that we can have other people tell us what's right for us, you know? Mm. Um, and I think embracing, that's why sometimes, you know, vulnerability is good, but you need to be pragmatic on how you show that vulnerability. You need to be aware, that you know, how you're gonna be perceived, um, but you say, I'm gonna do it anyway, because I, I think it's right to speak out for this particular issue. I just feel like it's almost, um, 
like there are things that you can do to try and you know understand yourself internally there are things you can do to perceive if you're in a trusting environment and then wrapped around all of that is all the biases you have in the world all the perceptions you have in the world all the things that people tell you you shouldn't do if you want to be a businesswoman or you, sh you shouldn't say or you shouldn't be like or you, like and all of that stuff is also around um uh, you know your uh, ability to be vulnerable and courageous um and so you're left with a situation where the you do see people using, I mean, I, I heard about this in this uh, talk, uh, was it a podcast maybe, about women using their afraid voice um, to, to, to disarm people, like the, the kind of higher pitched like register of like, I'm not a threat to you, right? Mm. When they're in a situation where there is kind of threat, like, oh no, you know, like that voice that people do. And then, uh, and then um, because if you're in a dangerous situation, you want to disarm other people so that they don't have a threat. And in sometimes you do that at work, you want to disarm your colleagues so they don't think that you're a threat to them. Because if you are stronger, people think, oh, well, she's an aggressive woman, isn't she? Like, you know, she's a, you know, like, and then there's all these words that come up to, and I, mm -hmm. and I heard, and I was listening to this thing where I think it was Salma Hayek, um, she was talking to Jada Pinkett, and she was like, women really need to know how to own their voice and like speak into their voice and actually like have a courage to just be themselves and be, and not speak in this high pitch register so people don't think that they're, they're scary. And for me, that is vulnerability and that's courage. Like being also, not overly uh, feminine just because you think it's going to get you, you know, past this particular door or it's going to make people feel less um, uncomfortable. That's also courage. And that's also vulnerability because it's scary. Like it's, it's scary to be stronger sometimes in an environment that thinks that you're supposed to be weak. Um, mm -hmm. So there is a context that, you know, this conversation might be different for a man who isn't, or, you know, try, it's maybe an opposite conversation for a man, but I just think the women, the woman dynamic is quite a fascinating one. Yeah, absolutely. So I think for me, um, uh, you know, at work emotions and showing emotions is part of the um, human experience and should be, and it should never be something that taboo or bad thing or not professional, or whatever. Now it depends on what emotions, meaning how you show it, I guess, because we always come back to whether this is emotion that you want to show, or this is emotion that you haven't really processed and therefore yeah. you're just all over the place and spilling, exactly. yeah. spilling everywhere, right? Yeah. So if it's something that you want to show, meaning if you're angry and you want to show that anger, not in, of course, way that people then say, oh, no, she has anger management issues or whatever, but, <laughs> but in a way that is authentic and uh, true to how you're feeling at that moment and you explain why and therefore you want to do something about it. Or, so I think we need to be doing it more so that emotions don't become this uh, bad things that we have at Out of work. control. Exactly, yeah. 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 Because as long as we are all able to come to a table with emotions that uh, we've processed and we want to show and, and yeah. be in that moment and then also trying to find solutions to whatever we're discussing yeah. then I think we don't longer uh, fear of those emotions I think yeah I think the, yeah. yeah the famous saying there is like don't work your childhood trauma out on your colleagues yeah <laughs> Sorry. exactly and it's like it's not for it's yeah at the same time we love vulnerability but it's not for you to have not processed the work uh, the, the the trauma and then you're just you know shouting at people like yeah and that's not vulnerability like that's and, not courage <laughs> it's like, exactly you know it's yeah. the same with uh blame i was uh listening yeah. to renee brown who was saying that blame is in science considered as uh uh, discharging your um, uh, anger or trauma to the world and it's, uh, it's the same thing so we're not saying that you go around blaming everyone and being angry at everyone shouting and all this but we all have all these type of emotions every second of the time in life, right? So the idea of shoving them to a side and going to work without them is just ridiculous to begin with. I mean, it's not even possible, like humanly. 
And, and second, once we are in at workplace and we are interacting with humans, we will always be having all these type of emotions. Mm -hmm. And that's normal uh, as long, um, whatever the normal we consider, obviously, but it's normal as long as we are using it to interact in a constructive way to get yeah, to not negatively solutions. impacting exactly. your, yeah, your colleagues exactly. exactly and not negatively suppressing or uh shoving everyone else uh, and saying that this is a time when only i talk and you all guys shut up or whatever right so that's not what we're talking about so yeah. i think we need to really distinguish there so that we are no longer a society that uh shows up as if we are robots and then we just uh, don't care about uh, feeling so and therefore I think women can be great ambassadors in that mm -hmm. sense of showing up in the workspace where we can really show up as who we are to an extent that we consider trusting to do that and also being comfortable with emotions and feelings uh, that we want to show and we want to um, stand by it and also saying that this is a human experience uh, and we want to build those authentic relationships as much as possible by showing up who we are rather than always trying to show another version of ourselves just because we think that in the workplace this is what's expected of us. Yeah and I, I love that kind of to wrap up all the different things that we've talked about like what you're talking about is that idea of being um, like having your emotions and trauma processed to a point where yeah. it's constructive, exactly. but equally having the um, being an ambassador of vulnerability as well. Because if, for example, you're a manager or a leader and you can lead from the front to say, you know, we're humans, we're interacting with humans, we're going to have reactions. Mm -hmm. As long as we're not negatively impacting other people, we should be able to express, you know, this didn't yeah. make me feel happy. And yeah. I'm a bit disappointed about this happening and, yeah. and, and having that vulnerability. And, and then at the same time, being aware that like, if you don't have inner understanding and self-awareness, um, you're not, your, 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 your dial or your radar on like triggers of emotion it will be completely off. So you'll yes. be, you know, like, like you said, blaming things that, on people that they, that they can't even, you know, it's not a vulnerability just to blame people yeah. for things they didn't do, right? So it's just, you know, so I think those, those that whole, that kind of, it's almost like three parts of it, that whole um, uh, approach has to come together. Like you, yeah. you do the work on yourself exactly. um, and you then are open to, you know, changing changing your environment in, an, in a constructive way by you leading by example you can't yes. pull vulnerability out of someone else yeah. like in a team building like be vulnerable no. in a raft and almost drown <laughs> so you can be vulnerable um but you need yeah. to do that bring it out yourself and then show the example it's Absolutely. the best way to get other people to be you know and then you know finally like obviously be, be as constructive as possible because it's because uh, it's yeah you are living with other humans and it's uh, important Absolutely. So that's a great way of summarizing. I think for me, just to uh, maybe highlight one or two things is that vulnerability for me has always been a space where my freedom lives. Meaning I feel free when I'm whenever I'm vulnerable and courageous to show up the way I can with as many people as possible, which also for me shows that I'm trusting myself, I'm in trusting relationship with others, right? And therefore this has really been like freeing way of living life and not worrying or thinking, oh, who will say what and how and uh, so that's why um, I highly encourage for everyone to think for yourself what it is that is vulnerability for you, whether you can, uh, you know, start thinking about it for yourself from the point of view of being aware, like uh, Selma was talking about, about yourself, being aware about your environment, where you are, and also uh, what relationships you have and how you want to use that vulnerability that benefits you most in the end of the day, no matter what the you know external uh, people or no matter what we're saying, but what makes sense for you and how you can actually use it in the way that serves you best uh, to bring out that uh, inner freedom, bring out that inner wisdom and yeah, be, be yourself basically. Great, thank you so much, Talma. It was pleasure, pleasure talking to you as usual. 
Uh, yeah, and I too. hope uh, we can do that more. We have other topics that, that we thought about. So for now, I thank you all and happy week, everyone.